Hey, what's up? Today, I wanted to make a video to show you how you can create and use your own custom business email addresses. And so in my case, I'm using spaceship.com, but uh, you might be using other providers and I'm assuming that the steps are pretty similar and uh, it should be pretty much the same. Now, there are many reasons why you might want to create your own custom emails. And so, for example, maybe you have some sort of business or organization that needs custom emails. And so in the end, it just ends up being more professional or maybe you simply want more control over your emails and your digital privacy. Or maybe you're trying to leave services like Outlook, Gmail, or things like Yahoo. And so those are all good reasons. All right, so to make it happen, we basically need two things. And the first thing that we need is the domain name of your choice. And a domain name is simply the name of a website. And so for example, uh, spaceship.com, the website that I'm on right now, spaceship.com is a domain name. But if you go on youtube.com, youtube.com is also a domain name. And if you go on amazon.com, well, amazon.com is also a domain name. And so the idea here is that you purchase your own domain name, your website or whatever you want to call it, and you simply own that thing. And to purchase a domain, you usually need some sort of services like some sort of uh, registrar. And so in my case, I'm using Spaceship and uh, they have a domain service here where you can purchase domains. And so usually you would purchase the, the domain that you want if it's available, obviously, because if you're trying to purchase YouTube.com, well, YouTube.com is obviously already taken. And so usually when you purchase a domain name, you try to purchase the, the name of your business or organization and so in my case uh, my business is called FraxaWeb and so uh, I purchased the domain name FraxaWeb.com and as you can see here this is basically my own website for my company and usually a domain you have to purchase it on a yearly basis so it's not something that you can own forever maybe at some point we'll be able to do it but as of right now uh, we can't purchase it forever so uh, you kind of have to purchase it every year and so personally I use spaceship to uh, to purchase my domain because I found that uh, the domains on spaceship.com are quite cheap and as you can see here it's about uh, 10 dollars per year and so it's quite cheap but it also depends on the domain name that you purchase because there are some domain names that are really expensive but the cheapest is usually around ten dollars and another reason why i used uh, spaceship.com for my domain is because they also include free domain privacy here that is basically included inside uh, the registration and I kind of like that because privacy here is, is quite it's quite a good feature to have if you want to avoid like spam and some sort of uh, all sorts of unwanted things. And so depending on the registrar that you're using, you might have to uh, purchase the privacy as an add-on. And so that would actually add to your... Uh, uh, domain name price and so the cool thing about spaceship is that it's cheap and also the, the privacy is included as well and ultimately the reason why you want to purchase your domain name is that first of all you'll have access to uh, your website and so fraxaweb.com is my domain and so I can put my website up but the reason why it's important is because we can create any email related to this uh, domain and so if for example I have fraxaweb.com that means that I can create any email address with this extension here and so for example uh, I created this email called frank at fraxaweb.com because I own the extension fraxaweb.com and if I if I had a friend called John then I could simply create the email john at fraxaweb.com and so Having a domain name is quite powerful because you can create a website and you can also create any email address with that domain name.
So now the second thing that we need is either a web hosting provider or an email hosting provider. And usually these web hosting companies, they usually offer all these services under some sort of bundle or under the same uh, company. And so for example, in my case, I'm using Spaceship. Well, Spaceship, they offer, yes, the domain name, but they also offer the hosting service and they also offer the email service. And so depending on the provider that you're using, then they might offer uh, many services. And one thing that you can keep in mind as well is that the, the hosting service here, they sometimes they include some sort of email as well. And so uh, in my case, I have one of these subscription, one of these hosting subscription, and there are a bunch of mailboxes and and email addresses included in this subscription and you have to be careful here because it's only for the first year in this case here but sometimes they are included like permanently but on spaceship it's all it's only included for the first year and then after the first year you kind of uh, go on the email subscription so you kind of you kind of have to manage your subscription and while we're talking about email right here, you can also decide to only purchase the uh, email hosting. And so usually email hosting is really, really cheap. And so uh, if you don't want to pay for email hosting, I'm pretty sure you can find free services. And so in my case, I'm using Spaceship here with the web hosting plan. And you know, it's quite cheap. It's like a few dollars per year. You know, here it's about like five or six dollars per year. So it's really not the end of the world. And so the reason why we need some sort of web hosting provider or email hosting provider is because uh, we're going to use their servers to host, manage and store our emails. Because when you use services like Gmail or Outlook or or Yahoo, you're unconsciously using their servers. And so for example, if you're using Gmail, you're basically using Google servers. And if you're using Outlook, then you're using Microsoft servers. And same thing for Yahoo. And so ideally, you want to use a provider here that you can trust. And you can use any provider that you want. But I think the most important thing is actually the domain name because ultimately the provider, you can always change in the future your provider. I mean, you can also transfer your domains, but you can transfer your emails as well. And so if you're tired to be one with one provider, you can simply migrate uh, your emails and your domains to another provider and another service or whatever. All right, so from now on, I'm going to assume that you have a web hosting provider or email hosting provider and that you have also your domain name. And so here I'm inside the spaceship dashboard. And right now I'm going to create uh, a new email address. And so here I basically uh, already have all these things. And so what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to go into the hosting manager here and I'm going to go under the uh, the domain name that I have. And so in my case, I, I have fraxaweb.com and then I'm going to select uh, the space mail, which is the uh, email service from Spaceship. And so I'm going to make sure that I can manage my space mail. And so here in space mail, we can see that we already have uh, an email address because that's basically the one that I created and that I use personally. And so what you can do here is that you can simply create a new mailbox and then you can simply enter the uh, prefix that you want for your email address. And so in my case, I'm going to call it example. And then as you can see, the domain name is at fraxaweb.com. And so right now I'm creating the email address example at fraxaweb.com. And so here I can simply create this. And so here uh, it, it's telling me that I successfully created it. And now it's giving me my mailbox and also my password right here. And so now I can simply finish it. So now that our email address is now created, now is the time to actually have access to it and test it and and just see if it works. And so usually web hosting providers and email hosting providers, they usually give you some sort of webmail 
where you can have access to all your emails just like for example if you're using gmail then you would use uh, gmail.com and if you're using outlook then you would be using uh, outlook.com because this is the webmail that you use to have access to these emails and in my case i'm using spaceship and spaceship has its own webmail that you can use and so uh, it is called space mail and you can simply log in here and the mailbox you would basically enter your email that you created and so in my case i called it example at fraxaweb.com and you can also enter your password that they normally gave you and then you can basically log into your uh, webmail and so in my case right now it's completely empty because it is completely new and so i did not receive any email i did not send any email and so that's why uh, there's nothing in here and so usually you would be using this as some sort of replacement to gmail or to uh, outlook.com or anything like that so yes you can use this webmail here on your web browser but usually my favorite way to access my email is usually by using some sort of email client and so in my case i'm currently using thunderbird and so what you can do is that you can simply go into thunderbird and or basically any email client of your choice and you can add your email address and so in my case i'm gonna add uh, my email address so the email address is example at fraxaweb.com and then i would enter my password and then i would hit continue so here it was not able to find automatically the servers uh, by default and so what you might have to do in some cases is that you might have to go into the uh, uh, the setups here, the settings here, and simply enable the IMAP and the POP3 settings and so that you can have access to these configuration. And then with these configuration, what you can do is that you can enter these configuration into uh, the, the, the email client. And so here, for example, the incoming server, it is the IMAP and so the IMAP is this address here and then the port is 993 and then the outgoing server it is this this address here and then the port is 465 and then you can simply retest and then done and then finish so now it was able to get it and now my email address is now available inside my email client in my case i'm using thunderbird but you could be using something like outlook the application or whatever so that thing was obviously using my computer but one thing that you might also want to do is have access uh, to your email from your mobile phone and so what you can do then is that you can also configure your uh, email on your phone and so in my case uh, i'm using the email application key9 mail but it's also going to work with any email application and so what you can do is that you can go into the settings of your email application and simply add an account and then you would enter your email address and so yeah, again uh, my example here is example at fraxaweb.com I would hit next and now it's also a, it's also going to ask me a bunch of configuration and so here i'm not going to do it but you would basically enter all these information uh, that we just did from uh, from the desktop client but we would do the same thing with the mobile client so that you can have access uh, to your email on your phone so now that everything is up and running, the last thing that we might want to do is simply try to send an email just to make sure that everything is uh, actually working. And so here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use another email address to send an email to my new email address. And so let's just do that to see if that works. And so here I'm going to send an email from frank at fraxaweb.com and I'm going to send an email to example at fraxaweb.com the subject I'm going to call it test and then I'm just going to enter a bunch of random things and then I'm going to send it it's sending 
And then if we go at example at fraxoweb.com, we can see that I just received my email. So I'm assuming right now that this is working uh, perfectly. And if we go back into the webmail and then we refresh, normally we should be able to see it right here. And then we can see that I received my email also on the webmail. And now I did not configure my mobile application, but I'm also assuming that my mobile application would also receive this email. So in the end, it is very possible to create your very own custom email address using Spaceship. And setting an email, a custom email, is usually quite common when you have some sort of business or organization and that you actually want custom email address. And so it just ends up being more professional. But other reasons might be that you want more control over your emails and you want more and you want more control over your digital privacy. Either way, with this method that I just showed here, you'll be able to do just that. That being said, it might require you, first of all, to spend some sort of money because uh, you'll have to purchase your own domain name. And so every year you'll have to uh, purchase that domain and it might also require some money to uh, purchase some sort of email provider or a web hosting provider. But I'm sure you can find a free email provider if that's only the thing that you want. And so that's something to keep in mind. And also it might also require some technical knowledge, a little bit of technical knowledge, just to make sure to configure all these servers parameters, just like I did like with the incoming server and the outgoing server. And so just to make sure that everything is configured properly. But once everything is up and running, you can use your email account uh, with any email application without any problem, just like you would do with your Outlook account or with your Gmail account. But it's just that you're going to use your own uh, email accounts. And so that's pretty much it for this video. And I hope that this video was helpful to you. If this video was valuable to you, you could consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. And if you have any thoughts or comments, you can leave them below because I will answer everything. And your thoughts and comments could also be valuable to other people. So that's pretty much it. Peace.